Blessings and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Reverend Dexo Peltzer, myself, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, Amen. and our special guest, our spiritual mommy, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter. Amen. Amen. And today's program is an exciting program because in the scope of things, eternity is the most important thing. We all need to ask ourselves, where are we going to spend eternity? We either in hell or in heaven, okay? I'm getting really real and right to the point. And it all depends on the choices that you make. Today's program is about setting your mind on heaven, on the heavenly things. And Mama wrote a book, A Divine Revelation of Heaven, and it's an amazing book. And today we're going to be talking about how do we get to heaven? What is heaven all about? And and about heavenly things and how we should set our minds on the things that really Amen. matter. Amen. <clears throat> and also, I want to let you know that Sister Mary is fully recovered and she's available to speak all over the nation. You can either reach her at uh, Mary K. Baxter Inc. Um, dot org or you can reach me at Shalom Shalom dot org to make those arrangements. Amen. So, Dexter, can you pray and start the program? Amen. Amen. Father, we're talking about the kingdom of heaven where you are, and we're so thankful, Thank Lord. Thank you yes. for the revelation Mary's going to bring today. I ask right now that you anoint all of us here to only speak thy yes. truth. Yes. yes. And Lord, anoint all of our eyes to see the truth, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive. And also, Lord, just for today also, it's, I feel it's important, anoint us to walk in the truth. That means that we have a heart and a mind that is locked in with your truth, Lord. Yes. And help us to understand your truth and to know your word, Lord. And even the truth today, Lord, help us to really understand yes. that and let it change us, who we are. Yes. As we walk with you from this day henceforth, in the name of yes, Jesus, help amen. Us, Lord. You know, I, I want to start out with the scripture about... Really, the, the way it works, um, Paul described in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, really well, which is that we are, we, Mama's going to be talking about heaven. And she went there for, of course, 10 nights in a row for three hours a night. Um, after going to hell for 30 nights, wow. And she saw and had a lot of revelation from heaven, and we're going to share some of that today. But I want to start out with really what the word says, our mindset is, we should always have our mindset on heavenly things. Why? Because Paul tells us that. And it's important that we understand that that's actually how the kingdom works. So I'm going to read the scripture, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how, more how the kingdom works, and Mom, Mama's going to talk about it. Verse three, chapter 3, verse 1 of Colossians. If then you were raised with Christ, that means we're saved, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, of course, in heaven. <coughs> Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Really simple. It's black and white. Put your mind on the kingdom of God and what God wants to do, and as thy will be done, and thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Well, how are we going to know what his kingdom rule and reign and what he wants us to do unless we have our minds set on what he's telling us from heaven? It says, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Yes. <coughs> Man, we're going to be in heaven, and in heaven on earth, of course, <coughs> during the millennium. We'll be ruling and reigning with Christ here on the earth. And then after the millennium, we know that God will create a new heavens and a new earth. The new Jerusalem will come out of the sky, and glory be to God, we will be with the Lord forever. And right, ever. Dexter. Right. And it says in verse 5, we're going to hit like Marisol said. This is really important. Paul speaks it very concretely. Therefore, since we've died with Christ and we're reborn again in the spirit, it says put to death your members which are on the earth. So not only don't put your mind on the things of the earth, but also they're crucified. My flesh is crucified. It's been crucified with Christ on the cross. So Romans 6.14 says... Therefore, sin shall have no more dominion over you, the power of sin over you. It says, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, <laughs> passion, 
evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked in the past tense when you lived in them. So it's important that we know that when we're born again, we are to crucify the flesh, the desires of the flesh, as it says in Romans 8.13, how? <coughs> by the Spirit. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your flesh, you will live. That's the scripture. So we need the help of the Holy Spirit and by that to put to death the power of the lusts of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, and then we'll live. This is really simple. As children of God, we're to be reborn again and set our things on, minds that, on, on things above. Now, I want to just be honest with you. What does the scripture say, Marisol, the Holy Spirit? Where does the Holy Spirit get his directions from? The throne of God. Right. It, it, the word actually says, the Spirit goes to the throne, to the Father and the Son, and Jesus says, he takes from me, because the Father has given me all things, Jesus says, and the Spirit takes from me and then brings it back to us, the directions. And he even tells us of things to come. And he guides us and leads us into what God's plans are for us. But the Holy Spirit goes even up to heaven, keeps his mind, his eyes on heaven. He goes up there, he gets the instructions and brings them back down. It's actually what the scriptures say. So our mind set is to be on heaven. Okay, that's really where everything is happening. So mama, you know, we're talking about having a mindset of heaven. Okay. So in heaven... Is, is there a throne? And is Jesus Christ next to the yes. Father of the throne? Yes. And are they directing the things on this earth? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. There is a throne. It's in Revelations, Dexter, chapter 4. In heaven, when I was taken to heaven, Dexter, there was such awe, such beauty, such joy. There's no law of death in heaven, Dexter. If a rose, a petal falls off, another rose grows. Amen. There's no decay. But I was taken to the throne of God for several things, Dexter. I was taken that, and shown about little aborted babies that had been aborted and how the angels brought their little soul to heaven and how God sat on his throne. God was humongous. He had a rainbow above his head. He, he was, uh, oh my goodness, Glory and power came all over him. You could not see his face, Dexter. I don't think we could. We says we can't live to see directly into his face. Right. But there was a, at the throne. There was Jesus on one side and the Holy Spirit on the other. And the throne could be moved wherever God wanted, high up or low. And he did a lot of things at the throne of God. There was the rainbow. There was also the outline of a man in this cloud, Dexter. And his hands would come out at the altar once in a while, and you'd see a man's hands and sleeves, and there'd be books brought to him, Dexter, to look at. The throne is where everything, <coughs> God is in charge of the throne. And many angels fall and worship him. And when something happens in heaven, there's speakers, Dexter, that blow trumpets. And the word, God speaks in his voice is like many waters. It goes all over heaven, but you understand it, every nation. Amen. And the throne of God, what I'd, I'd like to talk about is how powerful God is. Amen. How wonderful he is. In the, and in all scriptures, uh, there was an instant when I was shown the throne and the angel said, we're going to show you what happens to teardrops. These are parents and loved ones and children praying for God to answer them in prayer. And he said, God, as the angels catch every prayer and put it in order in the, the book, the record books, and also the room of tears, many tears that fall from their eyes, Dexter, angels catch them in little bottles or a bowl, a golden bowl, take them to heaven and put them in bottles and their labels with your name under them. And when the tear bottle is full, Dexter, they bring that bottle out and pour it on a book with blank pages and your name's on it. But the whole book, okay, every teardrop on one page is written words from your heart and soul to God. And they're treasures unto God. So when they have the bottle full, one bottle usually fills a whole book of blank pages. And that is so honored and so holy that it's carried before God's throne and laid before him extra like that. 
And God's arms comes out of the cloud. He picks up the precious book. And it's got the person's name. I didn't get to read it on the side in the front. And God opens it up. And this is where he's answering prayers for families. And on the left side, and the Lord had me look at it, was a cloud, Dexter, about two foot thick. And there was like 20 horses dressed for battle in that cloud with great armor on and a sword big as a man that flames shot out the top and the bottom. And the angel with me said, those are war faring angels and see what God does. He sends them to earth to help the people that have got the tear books. And God spoke with the voice of many waters. And he opened up that book. And he said, I see another one needs help. This is a mother's book of tears, he said. And he says he read the, he looked at it and turned the pages with his hands. And then he opened the book and he said out loud, go to earth and answer her prayers. Go to earth and answer her prayer. And Dexter, the pages lifted out of the book into the writer's hands and they would grab them and the Lord said go and I saw like an opening Dexter and all the men began to gallop on those horses down to the earth and he said joy cometh in the morning Amen. so God answers our prayer sometimes Amen. not when we want it Amen. sometimes not the way you want it but he does hear your prayer sweetheart he's a God of promise and on the way here to the TV station tonight, a rainbow appeared in the car. I see those many times for comfort and for God to, it's like God is saying, hey, I'll keep my promises. You just keep obeying me. And Dexter, it's very precious that when God gives us something with joy, we need to try our best, Dexter, to complete it. Because yes. there's great rewards for that, Dexter. Yes. You can't procrastinate, which we all have, honey. But in heaven, there's great rewards and there's halls of fame. There's robes of righteousness. There's gowns of salvation. You get rewards for serving the Lord. Right, Dexter? Amen. And, and God is in charge. I would like to, in a minute, when you have more scriptures, I want to tell you another about heaven I saw that I rarely share. Amen. Yeah, yeah, they would love it. Amen. I just want to, the, the word we just read was set our mind on the things above in the kingdom of heaven. And this is part of why the Lord gave Mama this revelation, is that so that we can actually even visualize and set our mind on how the kingdom is working. Your prayers, when you cry out to the Lord and you're shedding those tears, Hallelujah. whether it's for a family member, someone that's sick or whatever, we need to understand that that's a prayer deep from the heart. And that goes before the Father. And it's actually in Psalms where it says, the angels collect your, do they not collect your, your tears in a bottle? And it's Psalm actually 57. in Psalm 57. It actually First, says that. Yeah, seven, they eight, eight, bring them up to heaven, and those prayers then go before the Father. And then the heavenly realm, including the angelic realm, is released on your behalf, these warfaring angels, to bring the answers to the prayers. This is the way God works. And that's why when we set our things, our minds above, on things above, we're going to actually turn to the Lord in the midst of the worst trials and worst things happening in your life. All the time, we're going to go to him in prayer. And guess what? Then the kingdom of God will come down and answer our prayers in faith. If we turn to something else, we're on our own. This is really important. But no matter what we go through in life, if we always set our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf, even as the prayers come up, and then they're bringing forth the command, and whether it's back to the Holy Spirit to guide us, or whether it's releasing angels, all that is happening on our behalf. Right. Which is awesome. And yes, Mama, another... It is Psalms 56, Dexter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, 7, 8, and 9, it says, Thy, thy gather together, they hide themselves, they mark my steps, and when they wait for my soul, thy tellest my wonderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle, are they not in thy book? And when I cry unto thee, shall my enemies turn back, because this I know God is for me. That's wow. talking about the teardrops. <coughs> yes. do, do you hear that? Put my tears into your bottle, oh, capital hallelujah. Y. 
Are they not oh, in your book? Yes, the book glory that was just God. written with your tears. Mm -hmm. oh, when I cry out to God. you, then my enemies will turn back. What happened? The warfaring angels were sent out on your behalf. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to say this. We can either live in this kingdom and have faith yes. in our God hallelujah. and understand what he will do on our behalf. Yes, Lord. With Psalm 91 protection and everything else he does for his children. We can live in that realm and live in peace and joy. Or we can live in the realm of looking for answers on the earth and suffer. And, and really, what we sow is what we reap. If we look for the answer from man or from something other than God, we will suffer. Believe me. How do I know I know that as a prodigal son? So there's such a contrast here in the heavenly realm and keeping our mindset on that. Praise the Lord. Yes, Mama. Now, you had another testimony from heaven. Yes, it was many years ago, Dexter, and I'm just telling it to you. I saw the throne of God in another position. This was concerning the crucified of Christ, crucifixion. I had a vision, an open vision, of the day he was crucified. Hmm. And I actually saw <coughs> horrible crucifixion. But from his body, blood dripped down. From the cross, on his body, it was soaked in blood. And it went down into the ground. And angels came, many angels weeping and crying and yeah. picked up every drop of blood. Every drop. Praise and they'd the hold it up to heaven and they would cry unto God. And they took that drop of blood. And the Lord said 10,000 angels are bringing the blood to the mercy seat. So in this vision, I saw a gold altar, solid, hot, big as this table, gold altar. And it had a little dip in it. And every angel would come and bring and drop that blood on that altar. Mm. All through there, Dexter, it took like they were weeping and crying, and God was sitting on his throne looking. And there was another altar before that altar. The blood was offered a sacrifice to God, his son's blood. And then the other altar was something, I don't know what it was, like fire. Mm -hmm. And all the angels was falling down and crying and weeping. And God began to cry. And he, he did like this, put his finger up here, and he looked, and he cried, started crying. And he, he spoke in a tongue I didn't understand. I didn't, but I knew he was receiving the blood of his son yes. as That's a sacrifice yes. for our rotten sins, Dexter, yes. for our rotten things we do. He paid a price you can never yes. pay. He, he loves you. He wants you to go to heaven and have eternity. And you have to make a choice. Lately, I've been preaching a lot on hell and how you reap, Dexter, what you sow. But in heaven, you have joy. You never die. If you're 100, 15 minutes in heaven, you look 28 years old. God restores your youth, Marisol. Wow. Amen. And, you know, Mama said something earlier that, you know, about it's not easy, this walk, but we have to mm -hmm. finish the race. We have to stay steadfast. And... I want to just read this scripture, Acts 14.22, that the Lord brought to mind when you said that, which is, um, it says, to strengthen the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations yes, enter Dexter, tell the it. kingdom of God. Yes, hallelujah. Dexter, can I, I say something before you preach on that, son? Yes. <laughs> many times in my journey, people have rebuked me and saying, Oh, you shouldn't have trouble. You shouldn't be lack of money. You shouldn't have sorrow. The books you wrote, you should be so wealthy. Let me tell you something. There are trials and heartaches. When you pick up that cross, man, there's a suffering way. And you can pray and believe God he'll deliver you every time. But Dexter, many people don't even understand the scripture you read. The trials, every disciple but John the River died a horrible death. It's not an easy way, guys. And don't let nobody fool you. You have to pay a price on this highway. You know, the word of God says that we are, we are overcomers. Yes. So if he tells us we are overcomers, we're overcoming some trouble. And it also says that not to fear that he has overcome Come. the world. Yes. And he's giving us victory. He wants so us all come. these people that are telling you that everything's pink and sweet and nice, it's just tickling your ears. That's not life. That's life true. has trials and tribulations, and the Lord Sorrows. uses those things to refine us. But we have to persevere. We have to stand firm. 
we have to proclaim the word and we have to fight the spirit the spiritual battle Dexter and let me just read two more scriptures and then I want to just speak about that for a second John 16 33 Jesus says these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so I, we can become more than conquerors through Christ Jesus we have to understand this is the way the kingdom of heaven works we will go through suffering and trials and let me read one more second Timothy 3 12 all all Christians that will live godly that means you're all in in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution all <coughs> Christians who live godly yes. in Christ Jesus yes, shall suffer persecution this is the word of the Lord in fact it's a test really because if we're on that side in the kingdom of heaven and you're serving the Lord believe me you will have assignments against you demonic assignments you will have witchcraft assignments against you you will have persecution you will suffer why because you will not deny the name of Jesus Christ even if it means you lose friends and believe me that happens there is a big difference between walking and following Jesus and not you can't live in both you can't live in the world and live for Christ the word says you're gonna hate the one and love the other right you can't do both you can't straddle the fence so if this is all true then this is why what mama is saying is so important we are going to suffer persecution we are going to go through trials and tribulations in fact in James it says be of good cheer when you go through these tribulations right oh my goodness it's because what they produce patience and then yes. that you grow and you grow and you grow in the Lord to become more like Jesus Christ but the point of it all is if you're going through a tribulation and I've seen this and mama has spoken of it and your children are going through tribulations and maybe one of them is even a prodigal son those tears of those prayers that go up before the Lord I'm gonna tell you that's that's my strength right. I know that I'm crying out to the Lord I know those tears in a bottle are being collected I know those prayers will be answered right. and it will be answered if it's for my prodigal son it will be answered in a way so that when he comes back to the Lord he will stay with the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ and I will not lose faith in that because that's the promise of the word Acts 16 31 as I have believed my whole house will be saved I'm giving you the strength of the Word of God and when I pray that promise back to the Lord which I have I know that they will be saved so I don't go by what I see in the world I go by his promises and I pray them back to him does it hurt oh my goodness yes we've all had family members suffering we've all had those diagnoses of bad diseases and other things I don't know a family that hasn't yours or mine or mama's or anyone's or Marisol's but we have a strength and that is we can turn our eyes to Jesus Christ to heaven and our help comes from above and his mercies are new every morning and heaven will be released on our behalf if necessary to answer those prayers we must believe that that is our loving father and you are his loving child what would a father not Hallelujah. on this earth what would a father not do for his child come on this is the father and through the son that created the universes he will withhold nothing if necessary on behalf of his children glory be to God this is why we talk about this so that we have faith and we know who to turn to always turn to the Lord never turn to anyone else precious precious Lord Jesus thank you amen all right mama there is somebody watching that's ready to quit the ministry let me tell you something I had a son die of cancer Martha had a has a father that's a great general in the army had to have a leg Dexter has mother had a stroke and died before him don't quit do not quit you just keep going and do the best you can in Christ Jesus will give you the strength you never dreamed of that's, we all yes. have been sufferers. Yes, suffers. His grace 
is sufficient. Will pour out. And in, in fact, the <laughs> weaker you are, and the more you need, to, oh, thank you, Mama. His grace will be poured out abundantly yes. more than you can think or imagine. Yes. And whoever it is, that's a man. Son, we're here to tell you God is greater than your thoughts. He's greater. <clears throat> go ahead, Dexter. Amen. Let's pray <coughs> for him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mama, do you, you want to pray, pray no, for him? one of you guys. Okay, go. go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against a spirit that wants that man to give up in the name of Jesus. The lying, deceiving the spirit. The lying, deceiving spirit in Jesus' name. We silence your mouth. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In we Jesus plead name. the blood of Jesus over him. And I declare over you, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, son, <coughs> to give you a hope and a future and not to harm you. In Jesus' name, I declare life over you. I declare hope over you. In Jesus' name. And what I love is Hebrews 9.14. I want to pray that over yes. anyone right now that is suffering in, in pain, really, in your heart and your mind. Hebrews 9.14 says, The blood of the Lamb, this is the grace of God. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse your conscience, and we ask you to cleanse our conscience of all that pain, that suffering, those past dead works, Lord. Even the lies and deceits of the devil. Cleanse our conscience, Lord, and create in us a new, clean heart, a pure heart, and renew a right spirit within each one of us, Father. You know what? This day we choose you. Yes, Lord. As for me and my household, I choose you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I choose to follow you. Even when the road gets tough, Lord, I simply ask that you go before me and you go with me, Lord, that I do not go alone. And lead me, Holy Spirit. Fill me and lead me all the remaining days of my life. I choose you, Lord. Now help me in the midst of these trials. Help me to be strong for you always in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What a blessing. So remember, set your things on the things from heaven, on the Lord. Um, renew your mind by reading the scriptures, hearing the word of God, praising God. And God has been speaking to me and mama, and he's been saying the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. He is your strength. Yes, set your mind on heavenly things. I also want to yes. remind you, to please join our YouTube channel, shalomshalom.org. You can write to shalomshalom.org if you would like to bring Mama Mary to your church, amen, to preach and to proclaim the gospel, amen. And remember to please support her ministry by going to marykbaxterinc.com to buy her books. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, Reverend Next to Peltzer, and our special guest, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Shalom. Blessings. Shalom.